Hey everybody, Bandicoot Commando here, and welcome back to, uh, Resistance. Last time, we fought our way to reach the bus depot, and, well, we had some nice fun riding a tank to get there. Once we reached the bus depot, we held our ground, and we at least thought we secured the place, but then some spires were launched, and they released crawlers and infected everyone. All the infected were taken to this conversion center, uh, around in Grimsley, Grimsby, and, well, today, we gotta get out of here. This poor guy. This poor guy is good as dead. Hmm? Wait. Mom. Mom. He's got his tattoo of his mother. Well, sorry, pal. You're not gonna see your mother anymore. We might run into... Oh, hey. Hey there. Yeah, don't bother wasting your bullets on these guys. These guys are easy to deal with. But you still want to be careful because they can hurt you. Okay, I got full health. Okay, yeah. Those Chimera, Chimera if they were to... Oh, ooh, don't want to touch that. That's bad. These are explosive. You shoot them, they'll go off. Uh, but those Chimera that we're running into and dealing with, they are known as Menil. Menil. Like, Menil? Menil? Basically, what they do is that all they do is they just do labor. Just simple Menil labor. Uh, but they are still dangerous because although they are very frail and weak and you can easily take them out in like a hit or two. Yeah, see? Right here. Menil. Unlike other Chimera intended for combat, the Menil strain is bred to be a tool for basic labor. Menils will generally ignore other Chimera as they mindlessly handle their duties. Seldom encountered in combat. They are unarmed and appear sluggish and non-aggressive. However, like all Chimera, Menials w are unpredictable. They should be considered dangerous, especially when cornered. The worst part about them is that they tend to come in large groups. And... Oh, wait, hold on. Sergeant Hale, First Rangers. An American? We thought the Chimera stopped all of you in York. Chimera? Those creatures. Oh, you jammed it. I'm sorry, Hale. Looks like you'll have to find your own way out. I'll be in touch. Frequency 77.6. It was strange enough that a lone American soldier was walking around a Khmeran conversion center, but it was his eyes that were most disturbing. They showed unmistakable Khmeran traits. It was subtle, but it was there. Whoever Nathan Hale was, he wasn't entirely human. Should we be concerned? Maybe. Just maybe. Sorry, had to adjust that. Okay, um, so Parker has escaped. That's good. We need to get out. Um, so we came from there. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with my bullseye for a bit. I was gonna say, the worst... Wait, hold on. Yeah, now those are gonna blow up, so I need to keep my distance. Hello. The worst thing about these guys is, like I was trying to say, is just how stealthy they are. They can sneak up behind you when you don't expect it. 
And the thing is, they have this lunge attack where once they get a hold of you, they will bite you. And as they're biting you, they take a whole chunk of your health. But to get them off, you just gotta shake the controller to get them off. I don't know if there's an alter- like- Uh-oh. 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 Oh shit, that was close. That was gonna blow up. Good thing I heard it wanting to go off. A anyway, I was gonna say though, what do you do if, um, how does the game work if you, um, if your controller's, you know, Syax gyro controls are not active? Do you just have to wiggle the stick instead? At least on the bright side with these guys, and with them being taken out with one melee attack. Yeah, every time you at least, um... Every time you kill one, at least... Any others in the area that witness it, they'll take a moment to growl and hiss at you and... Pretty much leave them vulnerable. But when they're mixed in with regular hybrids like this... It could be hard to know, like, when one of them could sneak up on you while you're busy trying to deal with them. Uh... June... So, 620... So, June 22nd of 51. 1736... Oh, 1736 GMT. There are some of the cloven in the holding pen across from us. I hope we get to see them infected before the crawlers get to us. I bet they make slip skulls out of the devils. 2118 GMT. The cloven have been screaming for hours. Jensen knows a little Russian. Says they're yelling something about the angry night coming. Crazy bastards. 2322 GMT. The menals finally began infecting the cloven. They didn't fight against the crawlers. They all simply chewed the veins out of their own wrist. They bled to death rather than be converted. That's our first instance of hearing of the cloven. Alright, so I know there's one more left that needs to be killed. Hey, there you are! Oh, I got him. Nice. Okay, let's go. Oh, one more thing. Since I said that there is a co-op campaign, uh, the minnows do not do their grab attack in co-op. They'll just try to swipe at you. I'd rather that we don't learn. Well, I'd rather be stealthy, but there's no stealth in this game. Since when do first-person shooters have stealth? Going down. Hello. The weird thing is, is how these guys are a little more resist- resilient to bullets than a melee attack. Like, they still die to bullets, but it's better to just melee them. Oh. Yeah, watch your step. You'll run into traps like that. That it? Ah! The Rossmore 236. The Rossmore 236 combat shotgun is employed by the British Army for base defense and urban warfare. It is noted for its potent stopping power especially in close quarters. 
engagements. Since the Chimeran invasion, soldiers have found the shotgun very ad adept in displacing, dispatching howlers. Pressing L1 discharges both barrels. This method is less effect efficient than firing the barrel singly, but using it effectively can sometimes mean the difference between life and death. Your shotgun, it's a shotgun. It's the best way I could describe shotguns, but because you can fire both barrels with its single, with its secondary fire, uh, it can be more helpful than you think. Hedgehog grenades. The hedgehog grenade is a chimeran anti-personal munition. It is thrown like an ordinary hand grenade. Upon landing, it springs up and expands into a spiny cluster. At its kill height, the hedgehog fires spines in all directions with enough force to pin targets against nearby walls. The effect is especially deadly in confined quarters. Use the D-pad to switch your grenade types. I'm going to stick with my frag grenades for now, though. But the hedgehog grenades is very deadly. Very, very deadly. Especially when you use it in close quarters. In a closed room is just a good example. Alright. I really don't want to use my shotgun, but I'll keep it equipped for now, though. Nothing? Okay. Let's keep going. This actually works well against those things. Yeah, firing both barrels is very powerful, so when you're using it on the tougher Chimeran strains, we'll be encountering later. shaking like crazy it took a moment to get them off but see that's what happens when they get you and the fact that they can get behind you and do that it's dangerous Might be others. Okay, I hear bullets, so they're trying to fire at me. Oh, hello. All right, all right, I'm coming. I'm gonna get you. Here, have some of this. Though. go okay oh okay before I trigger that let me uh, alright these are switches don't ask how Nathan knows how they work he just does Yeah, don't be careful. Okay. Alright, looks like we're good. I think I'll, um... Oh, there we go, the end. 
the end of that part at least. The conversion center was built on top of an old fish cannery. Networks of tubes transported the bodies from one stage of conversion to another. Once humans are infected by the Chimeran virus, they fall into a coma. The virus begins changing their bodies from the inside out, eventually turning them into one of the Chimeran creatures. The conversion centers simply speed up the process. Conversion. The conversion center at 515 GMT. Let's go on for a bit before I have to stop. Right, here we Sergeant are. Sergeant Hale, come in. I'm seeing more hybrid patrols now. They must know we've escaped. Be careful. Yeah, that's how... That's how it does. Also, I didn't say I remember I was talking how oh how uh, Nathan doesn't talk much yeah he only mostly speaks during cutscenes so don't expect any good voice acting out of him well maybe not good voice acting just don't expect to hear his voice that much healed oh all right let's see we can't reach that all right there's some minor platforming elements that you have to do but it's not major or anything huh oh okay all right we're good we're good to go I think I'll stick to using my carbine for the time being Good thing that didn't hit me. You got if you're gonna use that, I think you can get a skill point by using those, but be careful. They can bounce to you and they can blow up and hurt you, so be careful. During the second phase of the conversion process, the humans are wrapped in cocoons. This accelerates the final stages of the conversion. What emerges from the cocoon is determined by the strain of the virus. Each Chimeran creature is created by a separate strain. What we call hybrids, the ones that most closely resemble humans, have the shortest gestation period. The more beastly creatures take months to create and are made from multiple human bodies. So, these are most likely cocoons for the hybrid ones. Oh no, not now. I'll use my shotgun on those when I, if I encounter more. See how useful the shotgun is against these guys? Right. 
getting into another fight here. I was gonna say though, see how much bullet that that one soaked up before he went down? Yeah, these goons offer some good defense. Here, bullets. Just know that you're, these are not your standard ratchet and clank enemies. Oh no, these Chimera have no humor in them whatsoever. Uh oh, that's bad. That's bad. it? Did we get them? Are they all gone? Hey, we're safe. For now. I'm only saying that because we don't have any health. Oh, I better find a stopping point. We're going on longer than I wanted. This is not safe. Shit, we're dead. Uh, yep. Well, if it stops me just before I open that door, I can just stop there. Back here. Okay. Well, then let me just clear them out again. Oops. I meant to switch my weapon. No, I'm trying to shoot the... There we go. There's no fall damage in this game. At least, I don't think there is. Ow! Okay, let's wake up and let's do this one more time. Yeah, those guys know when to take cover when an explosion's gonna go off. Jesus, you took so much of my health. I see you. Take advantage of that, too. If a chimera is not gonna react and you're shooting it through corners and wall spaces and little stuff like that. Take full advantage of that. The 
because sometimes they won't even know what hit. It's funny how you guys bend down at the right moment for you to, sh to shoot you in the ass. Okay, I think that's, I think we're good. Yep, we got them, and I'm safe, at least for now. Uh, before, actually, now that I think of it, before I go through, yeah, oh, there was, oh, I should have came up here from before then, I would have had a better chance of survival. Well, let's see if we can get through that room and if it gives me a checkpoint or not. Okay, I'm, I'm reloaded, I'm, I'm good to go. Damn, really? Explosives can be really finicky with these guys. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. Ah! got them. Now I need to use my hedgehog grenades. Okay, I think that'll do. We'll stop here. That'll do for this episode of Resistance. Join me next time as we continue to fight our way through the conversion center here and escape. So that is it, and I will see you guys next time.